In this video, we're gonna be doing a rapid fire roundup of all major updates that have rolled out for Zoho inventory for Q1 2025. As always, if you find this video useful, please be sure to like and subscribe down below. Leave me a comment with any video requests or kind of your favorite of these updates. Are there any that you've been waiting for? And as always, just head on over to Zenata.com and click on book a meeting if you'd like to talk about how we can help with your Zoho installation. So with that, let us jump on in. The nice thing here with this article that Zoho's put out kind of rolling through all of these is that the most important ones are really up at the top. So let us just get right in. This is a rapid fire roundup after all. So big one right out of the gate, email insights for sales orders. This basically just gives you the ability to see and filter on if a client has actually viewed that email that's gone out. Really nice thing, not everybody uses estimates where you get that like clicked to confirm. So you're actually able to see, hey, they've actually seen it and when they saw it, the date and the time. And then again, the big thing there is that you're actually able to filter on this. So they're kind of in this image, we can see this little uh, red box here around customer. That is a custom view of sales orders that have been viewed, right? So we'll actually be able to carve those out. Next two are kind of filtering in and looking at stock availability. So stock availability is a really important uh, metric to understand inside a Zoho inventory. At a high level, the difference between stock on hand and available stock really just comes down to when they are updated. So if I have a sales order and it's been confirmed, but that sales order has not yet been invoiced, then the stock will actually still show up in my stock on hand because I've not billed for it yet. But because it's on a confirmed sales order, it will be reduced from my available to for sale. So what does that really mean in practice? Well, what that means in practice is that if you're going to go do a stock count and you want to know like which items are low stock, right? And you're looking at stock on hand, you might be thinking there's a scenario there where stock on hand might lead you astray because you could have a really big confirmed order that's going to meaningfully reduce the stock for a given item, but it's not actually subtracted from stock on hand until I've invoiced. So in a lot of cases, you actually want to be using that available stock number because it's more realistic, right? It's like whether or not we've invoiced someone for this product, They've signed the contract. I've got a confirmed sales order. It's effectively out of my stock. So now when you're doing a stock count, you'll be able to filter on stock availability. And I would say even more importantly, when you're creating a new transaction, like an estimate, a sales order, whatever it may be, I can actually toggle to see my available for sale stock. So like if I'm on the phone with a client and they're like, hey, is this going to be a back order or do you have it available to send to me? Again, you use stock on hand, you might be wrong because you're not going to see that massive sales order that's going to wipe out a bunch of stock once it's actually invoiced. So I could actually go in and look at available for sale and give a more accurate understanding to that client because that's really what I'm able to sell separately of like, hey, whether or not we've billed for this or not, it's committed to an existing sale. So I shouldn't be able to see it and quote on it or give a client an understanding that uh, we have it on hand and can ship it really quickly to them. A couple others here. So exporting bin locations. Bin locations are kind of a new feature inside of inventory that came out a couple months back. The idea there is you're kind of mapping out your warehouse. And rather than just saying, hey, I have 10 of these widgets, you're saying I have 10 widgets in this warehouse and they're over here, right? They're in this zone and they're in this little slide out bin in my warehouse. So you're now able to export those. So if you want to do a little bit of slicing and dicing on your own, maybe you're going to run this through like a walking path optimization tool, right? Maybe reorganizing your warehouse. You can actually pull all that data out much more easily now. A big one here, it seems minor, but this is actually really nice for companies that drop ship is the ability to add a drop shipping address to a sales order. You might be thinking, well, I mean, you've always had an address on a sales order when you're drop shipping it. What's the difference here? The main difference is that previously, in order to use an address for any sales order, including a dropship, it has to be a customer address, which means that unless you go in and delete it, it's going to be permanently saved as an address on that customer record. In a lot of cases, that's totally fine, right? If you're just like shipping an end user product to my house and you just happen to be drop shipping it, it's like, yeah, go ahead and save that address to the customer record. There are a lot of cases, though, where that's not the case. You might be working with a customer. You normally ship things to their primary address. But for this one order, right, we need to ship it to some worksite location. 
right? That's separate from their corporate office or kind of like their main dispatch center. And so I just am like, hey, I want to add this address one time, right? Maybe I'm populating this via API, which would be a lot easier to add it to a sales order field than have to add it to the customer. So I can basically say, hey, this is an address. I need to use it for this order, but I don't need it permanently saved for all of perpetuity in the customer record. If you have a customer you're working with that has a lot of different site addresses where they like do some work there, then they're done. They're never going to order to there again. This is going to keep things a lot cleaner inside of your account. Next up, a whole bunch of new Zoho inventory reports. This is actually one of the areas that we get a lot of feedback from clients that the reporting is a little bit weak in Zoho inventory. Nine times out of 10, we're pulling everything into Zoho Analytics and then we're pulling reports from there. A couple of things, they've added new reports and they've also greatly increased the export limit. So if you do want to pull these out and use them in a separate reporting tool that isn't natively connected to Zoho Inventory, you can do that much more easily. And then as we go through these reports, outside of just the update for the bulk exports, they've added a bunch of detailed new columns. So like when you're looking at a cost tracking or a first in, first out, you're looking at purchase orders, you can see more data like, hey, what's in transit? What's been received? What's late? You're able to do a lot more with custom reports, being able to use more advanced filters across them. So overall, just a bunch of improvements, little tweaks and adjustments there for inventory reporting. If you're looking to go super deep into the data, you're still likely going to need to use something like Zoho Analytics. But even if you can just save one or two custom reports that you no longer need to build, I put that as a win. Next one here, display type for lookups. This is really minor. Really just the difference of how you want to choose a value when you use a lookup field. So it's either going to be a list view or give you a drop down. Next is generating serial numbers for inward transactions. This basically means that when I'm receiving or billing for a product, I can actually assign serial numbers at that point. So just saving a little bit of time versus having to assign them later. Some general improvements for batch tracking. Batch tracking, of course, is where you're working with something generally that has an expiration date. So maybe this is a like a lotion that's going to interact with a human. Maybe it's a food product that has an expiration. You need to track batches for those. They rolled this out a while ago. It's actually always been pretty solid, but now you can actually create and edit batches directly from the items page. Um, When you do a return, you'll be able to return items to the same batch. That's a huge one, especially if there's like a recall, right? Like there's an issue with the batch. You need to make sure that all returns are being batched correctly. Then we can also use the same batch in multiple line items for a purchase, looking at statuses of batches. So saying like, hey, this is an inactive batch. Maybe it's expired, right? So I'm going to make it inactive, which would mean that I can no longer sell from that batch, right? So They kind of rolled out batches, but they're missing some of these core features. Like the status one is huge, right? Because once something is expired, like you cannot sell it, right? And getting back into that idea from the available stock discussion of I need to be able to give a customer an accurate understanding of how much I have in stock. Well, if I have a bunch of expired batches that are still showing up in there, you might mislead yourself and give someone a bad quote. Next one here, kind of just an improvement for the UPS integration. So you can now have specific item descriptions for each item rather than having a single description for all items. So again, just a little bit more detail there. Enhanced Shopify integration. This one honestly might require a full video of its own, but new sync integrate or new options here. So sync frequency. Now we can actually run an item sync manually rather than having to wait for a 24 hour sync. Non-taxable items are getting a fix. This is a big one. There is a kind of a a lingering issue where you have an item on Shopify that's indicated as non-taxable. You'd place an order that tax exemption would not come across, right? So now Zoho inventory thinks this item needs to be taxed. So even though you're not going to be charging the customer that tax because you're billing them likely through Shopify, it's still showing up in your reporting and you'll have to kind of back it out once it lands in inventory. Next one here for sales order syncs, we can actually pick a start date. So we can go back in time and sync historical orders as well. Really, really nice. Then you can choose if they should go under a single customer or create new customers using name and email. You've always had it creating new customers. So really what's new here is the ability to route it all under a single customer. Personally, I think you should make new customers for each. That's an opinion, not a fact, but I think you're gonna be happy that you did later when you wanna market to them about products that they purchased or maybe that they haven't purchased. Pinning columns on the transaction page, really, really minor. But again, you're just able to actually say like, hey, 
if I scroll to the right in a certain list view, I want to make sure that I always see that particular column. So this could be customer name, transaction number, right? What have you. Editing orders from Etsy. So previously, when an Etsy order came through the default integration, you weren't able to edit a lot of the details in the tax. Again, tax is really the one you'd mainly be looking to edit there. Now you'll actually get to make that adjustment. For those outside the US, you can clone uh, certain delivery records. Not super applicable if you are in the US. Exporting and print screen in reports, thank goodness, kind of expanding these. So setting file names, column headers, organizing it into pages and groupings, adding MFA for portals. This is actually really nice because depending on how you're using the inventory portal, someone may be able to log in and accept an estimate, right? They might be able to place an order with you, right? So being able to make sure that like, hey, John Smith placed this order through the portal and we know that it was him, right? Because he came in and he did MFA. So again, just a nice security update. You really want to be able to use multi-factor everywhere that there's a login occurring. I know it's annoying. None of us like having to pull out our phone and grab a rotating code or receive a text, but I promise you the downside is uh, much worse if somebody is to get into your account um, without your consent. Move overs and put aways. I'm going to skip that. No one's really using those. Um, but inside a purchase receives a couple updates. So attaching documents into a purchase receive, this could be like the shipping file that was, you know, sent with the box. So you're able to, you know, track that against the actual things that you've received from whatever vendor sent them to you. We're also able to actually generate PDFs for purchase receives. Thank goodness. This was always an issue that there was just no real way to do this. Some people do, in fact, need a PDF that looks like this when they do a purchase receive. Next one here, custom filters for lookup fields. This is really nice. So if you have a custom lookup, maybe you're pointing to a custom module or you're pointing to an invoice from a custom module, you can actually filter what's going to be available in that lookup list based on some field parameters. So that is really slick. Another one here, pretty minor. Most people never need this except for Zoho partners who end up testing and fixing a lot of little bugs. If you've ended up in multiple organizations of inventory and you no longer need to be in one of those organizations, you can now just leave. Again, most people will never have to touch this. Selfishly as a partner, I have worked with a lot of people who get into a bit of um, organization hell, right? Where they've just associated, they've ended up associated with so many of these and it's a big pain in the butt. So now, as long as you're not a super admin, they can't leave one. They can only delete one. You'll just be able to leave one of those organizations. So with that, I think we've covered everything on this list. As always, really appreciate you for tuning in. Leave a like down below if you find these types of videos useful. Kind of the rapid fire roundup of everything going on on a quarterly basis. Leave me a comment on which ones of these you've been waiting for or that you're excited to try out. Let me know what you'd like to see on the next round of updates for inventory. I've got a few on my list, kidding and assemblies kind of needing some work. With that, we'll wrap up for today. As always, thank you so much for watching. My name is Tyler Colt, and I will see you next time. Thank you.